my theme of 2024 is to uh, not force anything and to just allow things to unfold, allow things to happen, to surrender to life. Like, sure, I can initiate things, I can try new things, but I don't try new things with the intention of a specific outcome. I try new things because it brings me joy in the very moment. I don't launch a product because I think it's going to make me X amount of dollars. No, I launch a product because I feel like it is good for my customers, it is good for my students, and it's good for me. It makes me happy. It's useful to society and it's useful to me. It makes society happy and it makes me happy. And obviously, I'm not here to please everyone. There are obviously going to be people who are not benefiting from my products and my content. But if it benefits the people I want it to benefit, then I've done my job. Welcome to the Early Retirement Advantage Podcast, where you will get weekly doses of inspiration to pursue financial freedom while caring for your mental health. After being diagnosed with several mental illnesses during the pandemic and getting fired soon after that, I decided to turn that into an opportunity to pursue FIRE, financial independent and retire early. If you're ready to kickstart your financial freedom journey while taking care of your mental health, you've come to the right place. You will learn the mindset and strategies to retire early from anything that no longer serves you. So let me just get ready and I guess share a little bit about what is happening behind the scenes. And I really went from going hardcore on YouTube to now being really afraid of YouTube. I think I developed this fear around posting videos. And I think this fear really stemmed from feeling like I have nothing worthy enough to be shared and feeling like I need to get all my ducks in a row, get the stars to align in order for me to start sharing about my thoughts and my life. And of course, it also has to do with imposter syndrome because there is definitely a big part of me that feels like the only reason why I'm able to retire early is because I got lucky. That's definitely a fear that uh, is really heavy on my heart. And sometimes I just feel like, why am I trying to share stuff when I am not a thousand percent sure that other people taking the same steps can do what I do? Because there's definitely opportunity in here, right? There's definitely the luck component in here. I'm not going to deny that. And of course, there are also things that I was fortunate enough to have, you know, like good education, a family that is supportive of my education, sending me to private school as a kid. Like these are not things that every single person has. And so, you know, I just want to, I guess, make this video as let me come clear, but also as a uh, recording my journey and how I have decided to talk about things, even though I don't feel like I'm like the expert on this, because I feel like this is something that a lot of people experience too. Like you don't have to have the same titles or the same accomplishments or you know the same success in order for you to feel imposter syndrome, in order for you to feel that you don't have something worthy of sharing, that your voice is not important or your thoughts are not important or that your experiences are not important. Like, I really don't think I am alone on this. And so I really want to just make this video because I know for sure a lot of people are experiencing very similar feelings, even though the situation may look very different. So I do feel like, unfortunately, a really big roadblock for us women of color immigrants is that you are not blessed with a natural state of high confidence. People don't tell you that you are meant to conquer the world or that the world is your oyster. And if anything, we're told the opposite. We're told that, you know, don't be too arrogant, keep your head down, try to be as humble as you can. When people compliment you, you're supposed to say, oh, I'm not actually that good. At least that was my upbringing. And so there's a lot of conflict in that. It's very hard to be respected in the Western society with an extremely humble mindset and approach. And I've actually been told many times in my life to, you know, stop being so humble and to actually, you know, brag a little more and to admit that I'm actually good at things. But it is just so difficult for me. Like with a simple example, I was playing board game the other day at a Christmas party. And then the entire time, I'm just like, again, trying to be humble, trying to be like, oh, I don't know how to play this. I don't know what's my next step. And one of the people at the game literally said, like, Cherry, like, stop faking it. We all know that you know what the next step is. But it's really a force of habit. Like, I'm not doing this to, like, win at the game. I'm literally doing this because I am uncomfortable with admitting that, hey, I know how to play this game. Hey, I know what the next step is. Like, it's not even, like, I'm trying to buff at a... Uh, at a poker game. No, I was just trying to be humble, even at a board game. And it's just like so deeply ingrained. I'm just so uncomfortable with admitting that I know how to do things. I know how to win the game or at least play the game. Like even something as simple as that, it's so difficult for me to admit. And you know, that translated into my 2023 
I think it's just full of a lot of internal struggle. And if you have followed me on my, you know, other platforms, you probably know that even on my other platforms, I have actually disappeared for a while. And there is just too much internal struggle, internal conflict. I just kept feeling like I'm not good enough to be posting. I don't know if my stuff is valuable enough for me to, you know, waste people's time. And there's just a lot of internal wars, internal fighting. And obviously it's going to be really difficult for me to share under that mindset. I feel like I messed up my eyeliner or whatever. Yeah. It's very hard to like put makeup on in front of the camera. I feel whenever I do that, I just feel like there's so much pressure. I need to do things right. Again, ties back to, you know, my perfectionism and feeling like everything has to be perfect in order for me to be worthy of sharing my experiences. So, you know, 2023 has been... A lot of constipation <laughs> to be honest and if you've been following me for a while you probably know that i'm not one to like make everything fancy <laughs> it felt like constipation it felt like there is a lot of creative blockage there is a lot of imposter syndrome there's a lot of fear i fear that my stuff is not good enough to have people watch to have people read to have people consume and so therefore i just choose to not create at all and i did a lot of script writing in 2023 like you know, I actually wrote out my script for a lot of my content. Maybe you can tell the difference, maybe you cannot. Let me know if you can actually tell the difference. But, you know, in my head, I just feel like my spontaneous thoughts are not good enough for me to make a video. So even making this video, I didn't write a script for it, but I definitely battled with a lot of fear. I was like, am I sure I'm going to do this? Am I sure I'm just going to like sit here and blab about things and potentially waste people's time and make people angry? Like there's just all these like scenarios playing in my head. But in the end, I decided to take the step because here's what I feel. If you don't try to step outside of your comfort zone, if you don't try to overcome your fears, then you are going to be living in a tiny corner of this vast, vast world. And all the walls will start closing up on you and you'll be back into your corner and why do i know this because that is what my 2023 was like i was afraid of everything i was afraid of offending people i was afraid of wasting people's time i was afraid of trolls i was afraid of haters i was afraid of people and it's to the point that you know i already had social anxiety to begin with but it's to the point that i would get afraid of even walking outside of my home like a lot of days i would just like stay inside my home and not do anything and just like depend on the food that lasts a long time like ramen or noodles or frozen food and I just be so afraid that I'd rather starve than go outside and get some food and of course I can order food but that's like expensive so like I would be afraid of doing grocery shopping too like there's just so many things I would be afraid of I would be afraid of doing my Amazon returns sometimes I'm like you know just stepping outside and making eye contact with strangers that was scary to me and that has gotten a lot better because I have actually tried to just overcome my fears and some people ask me how do you overcome your fears and I actually just do it <laughs> I just push myself to get over it and I don't think there's like a special technique to overcoming fears there's just a commitment right you commit to doing it and therefore you do it you'll figure out ways to do it and I also remind myself that I wasn't always this way yeah you know, I used to be a lot more fearless and I think in the past I used to think that when you get older you get wiser and therefore you have less fear but that's actually not true sometimes you get older and you actually become more fearful because you have more to lose and I think that is a depiction of my 2023. I had all these like titles glamour stuff like I have you know retired three years ago at 25 years old and I made x amount of dollars and x amount y amount of time right like all, all these millionaire status all these things but I slowly realized that they're almost like golden handcuffs they're holding me back from doing things I remember making a video saying that I'm going to apply to Lululemon to be a sales associate and like even making that decision I was so freaking afraid. I was so afraid that people were gonna think I am a fraud. Like you say you retire early. Why are you working as a sales associate? Like, yeah, right. You haven't really retired early. You're just doing it for the money. Like there's just like a lot of fear. And obviously like these fears were proven to be true because there were people who thought that way. But like, am I going to live my life according to what, you know, potential haters or trolls might say? Or am I gonna live my life according to how I want to live it. And what is the point of retiring early if in the end you still cannot do what you really want to do? Like, I want to be a sales associate at Lululemon, so let me do that, right? I want to make TikTok videos, let me do that. I'm going to make YouTube videos, let me do that. Like, what is the point of retiring early if I'm still trapped in that tiny little prison? And the only difference is, in the past, you're still allowed to work a corporate job, but after you retire early, 
you're not even allowed to work a corporate job. Like that sounds like even more limiting to me than, you know, before retiring early. So why go through the hassle of retiring early if you're going to live in an even smaller box? That is how, how I felt about 2023. And now it is the new year of 2024. This is actually the first time in my life when I feel like this new year has felt kind of anticlimactic. I don't feel like there is something special. Like I didn't even do the New Year's countdown. Usually I, you know, turn on the TV and I listen to the New York countdown because I live in LA. So it's like, you know, a couple hours late and that used to be a thing. But this year I just like, I didn't feel like it. I just didn't want to do the same thing as what I did in the past. And, you know, instead I just want to focus more on my inner world. And this has also been the theme ever since I went to Florida for a month in 2023. And in that month, I've learned so much and I'm still honestly integrating a lot of that. Part of the thing that I've learned is that no matter what happens on the outside, you know, the glamorous titles, the millionaire status, the portfolio size, the FI number, like all these things, your assets, your cars, your home, like all these things are not nearly as important as your inner world because in the end, the only thing that you get to really experience is your feelings, is your inner world. And if your inner world is all chaotic, if it is out of alignment, if it is constantly at war, that no matter what stuff you have, you're not going to be happy. And we all live on this earth to be happy. We don't live on this earth to become millionaires. We don't live on this earth to drive Lamborghinis. We don't live on this earth to buy all the Birkins in the world. We live on this world to be happy. And it's obviously so much easier said than done. And a lot of things like you hear people say, and it doesn't really hit until you experience it yourself and you're like, oh, so this is what they mean by happiness is what we're after. Like, you know, pursuit of happiness is what we're after. And a lot of people, they think pursuit of happiness, they have to do with the outside world, you know, like living in a big house and having X amount of net worth or, you know, having a hot boyfriend, girlfriend, wife, husband, but it's none of those things, you know, even relationships, they're still the outside world, unless it's a relationship with yourself, which has to do with your inner world. And this has just been such a hard lesson to me. I think for a really long time, I tried to manipulate the outside world to make me feel better. I tried to make more money. I tried to do things in my business. I tried to even do things on my corporate job, you know, try to get that promotion, trying to get that raise, trying to play the, you know, corporate ladder game. And I did those things with the intention of feeling better. Another lesson that I learned when I was in Florida was that what is important is not the action itself, but the intention behind the action. And, you know, as a recap, I went to Florida because I wanted to visit the Temple of the Universe, which was built by Michael Singer, the author of The Surrender Experiment. And if you haven't read the book, I will just give you a very quick summary. Basically, he says to surrender to life and to not fight with life and not manipulate life to match your expectations. That is like the gist of the book. And I remember when I was in Florida, a lot of things happened. And there was a part of me that was like, how do I know if I'm surrendering? How do I know? if this is what they call as surrendering or if I'm actually fighting. And I had, you know, all these actions that I was taking. And, you know, I I had all these questions because I'm like, how do I know if I'm doing this right? Like I was still in that student mindset. And as a student, there's a right answer and you want to get the right answer. So that was the mindset that I was in. But here is what I learned. You determine whether you're surrendering by looking at the intention behind it. So I guess a little thing that happened, a little challenge that I was faced during my Florida visit was an Airbnb situation. I might create another video about this. I don't know if there's a need, but basically I was living in an Airbnb with no running water for like three days. And then right after that, there was plumbing issues. And then there's literally poop water coming out of the shower sewer or like, you know, the shower drain. And it was like just really gross. Um, and you know, I try to surrender to all that, aka put up with all that without saying a thing. And then the Airbnb host decided to frame me and say, I'm the cause of the plumbing issues. And the cause is because I use too much toilet paper to wipe my butt with. (laughs) And so she tried to get me to pay for her plumber, even though like her house had plumbing issues. And like, if I put in like, let's say a plastic toy or whatever into the toilet, then sure, it's my fault. But if I just put toilet paper, like how can that be my fault? But yeah, she she tried to frame me for that. And I went through a battle from within. I was like, should I surrender to this, aka not do anything? Or should I fight for my rights? 
and stand my ground and also move out of that place because, you know, problems just keep on happening. And I even pop my tire at her property, you know, of my rental car. So that's like a whole ordeal. I had to get my car towed and all that. So, you know, I have to really figure out whether this is surrendering. Like, what do I need to do in order for it to count as surrendering? But this is what I realized later on. Surrendering is not about what you do, but it is about your intention behind it. Like, let's say if I try to fight with my Airbnb host, am I doing it with the intention of loving myself or am I doing it with intention of getting revenge? And if I do it with the intention of getting revenge, then that intention is not surrendering. But if I do it with the intention of loving myself, like I'm doing this so my inner child knows that I am protecting myself, I have the ability to protect myself now as an adult, and the history is not going to repeat itself, I'm not going to feel like that helpless little kid in fourth grade who's bullied by classmates and unable to do anything for herself. If I do it with the intention of loving myself, that is surrendering. Because I'm not doing it to get a specific outcome. I'm not doing it to win. I'm doing it just to make myself feel loved by myself. And so that is what I decided to do after, you know, really struggling with what to do in that situation. I decided to just allow myself to protect myself not for winning, not for a specific outcome, but for myself to know that I have my own back. And I think for a really long time, I did not have my own back. For a really long time, I felt like I was all alone on this earth and nobody can help me and I'm all helpless and I'm a victim. Like there are all these thoughts that stem from my childhood experiences. But after this Airbnb situation, I have a newfound respect for myself. I have a newfound safety that comes from within. It doesn't come from what happens on the outside world. Like, can I guarantee you that Airbnb stuff like that is not going to happen in the future? I cannot guarantee that. But at least I know that when this stuff happens, I have my own back. I'm not just going to like surrender and not do anything because that's not what surrendering means. Surrendering does not mean inaction. It means being very clear about your intentions, why you're doing things, actually looking at what is happening in your inner world and doing things not out of fear, but out of a place of peace. You're at peace with your decision. You're at peace when you take certain actions and you're not so caught up with the outcome. You're not so caught up with winning or losing or what happens afterwards. You're just living in the now and you're just doing what truly deeply feels right instead of like trying to manipulate the outside world to match your expectations. And to be honest, I didn't really have any expectations when I went in that whole Airbnb fight. I just let go of expectations. And I told myself many times that I'm not doing this to win. I'm not doing this to get revenge. I'm not doing this to get compensation or a refund or whatever. I'm just doing this because I want me to know that I am safe, that I am in good hands, that I have my own back. And that's all that matters. So that was the, you know, one of the biggest lessons that I learned in 2023, that it is not about the specific action but it's about the intention behind taking those actions. And two people can be taking the exact same action, but with different intention, the meaning is different. And whether they're surrendering, that is also different. I remember asking Michael Singer this question too. In short, he's a really successful businessman. He sold his business for millions of dollars. He's probably a billionaire. We don't know for sure because I don't think his net worth is public, but he's just very rich, very successful, very wealthy. And he also wrote the book about surrendering. And one section of the book he talked about going into a lawsuit and hiring lawyers to defend himself. And I asked him this question, I'm like, how do you differentiate between surrendering and not surrendering? Because, you know, going to a lawsuit and, you know, fighting for yourself sounds like not surrendering. And then he gave me the same answer. He's like, it's not about the action that you take, but the intention behind it. He did not get into a lawsuit with the mindset of like, I have to win this, or I, I have to make other people pay the price or whatever. No, he went into this with the intention that like this is the right thing to do like i know that i'm protecting my people i'm protecting myself and i'm at peace with this decision i'm not trying to screw anyone over and it was that moment when i'm like oh again solidified my understanding of this whole surrendering thing it's not about the action that you take but about the intention behind the actions and you know going into 2024 sure i have like new year's resolution or what i like to call them is less like resolution, but more like intention. Like I intend to do these things, but these are not set in stone. They're not like permanent things I have to do. And if I don't do them, I'm gonna beat myself up, at least like verbally, internally beat myself up. Like that's not the vibe here anymore. I don't wanna do that anymore. And instead 
I just want to focus on the intention of it all. The intention is I want to focus on my well-being. What does that look like? That looks like sleeping healthier, right? Like having a healthy sleep schedule, a regular sleep schedule, and also eating healthily, eating on a regular schedule and eating healthy foods, nutritious foods, foods that are good for my body, and also working out healthily, working out regularly, doing workouts that I enjoy, that are good for my body, that makes me stronger, that makes me healthier. Like these Three are my intentions of the year. And, you know, interestingly, they have nothing to do with money. I think for a really long time, I felt like nothing matters more than money. And everything that I do, it has to do with money. It has to come with monetary outcome. But I really feel like I'm over that. Not as in like, I don't need any more money in my life. No, like having money is great, right? It can help me do more things. Like I'm basically a vessel. And when I receive money, I turn it into something that is useful. Like maybe I turn it into investing my business, investing my knowledge, and then teaching this knowledge to other people, creating videos about it, right? Like money is great, but it is no longer the intention. I think of money as a natural byproduct. When I focus on making my foundation solid, then everything else comes naturally. I don't need to force anything to happen. And I think that is also a theme that is per 2024. My theme of 2024 is to... uh, not force anything and to just allow things to unfold allow things to happen to surrender to life like sure i can initiate things i can try new things but i don't try new things with the intention of a specific outcome i try new things because it brings me joy in the very moment i don't launch a product because i think it's going to make me x amount of dollars no i launch a product because i feel like it is good for my customers it's good for my students and it's good for me it makes me happy it's useful to society and it's useful to me it makes society happy and it makes me happy and obviously i'm not here to please everyone there are obviously going to be people who are not benefiting from my products and my content but if it benefits the people i want it to benefit then i've done my job i think for the first quarter of my life up until i even want to say last year i was very much forcing things into existence i'm like pushing things to happen and i'm like really extremely impatient if i don't see the result right now i'm like yo like hurry up what is going on and i like to follow up a lot like when let's say the credit card company promises me a certain sign-on bonus and i still don't get it after the promised date after let's say three months i like really get on their back i'm like hey make this happen chop 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 but now i'm like you know what like first i'm not so obsessed with money anymore so i don't really uh do so many sign on bonuses anymore but second is that you know i just allow things to unfold like sure i still follow up but i don't do this like every single day and i'm not like on people's back and i'm not like you know constantly worried about things and getting anxious over you know things on my to-do list no i'm just like Take a deep breath. I just know that I'm okay. And even if I don't finish everything on my to-do list, I'm okay. Like this past year, 2023, there were a lot of things on my to-do list that I just like ignored. Am I okay? Yeah, I'm still sitting here, so I'm okay. Sure, I, I wasn't as productive as before, but that's not the point. Living life is not about being as productive as you can. No, that's not the purpose of your life. And the purpose of your life is to be kind to yourself, is to love yourself, is to fulfill your dharma. And in order to do that, you have to have a foundation, a solid foundation of well-being, of taking care of yourself, doing those selfish things. And it's so counterintuitive because, again, with my upbringing, I was told to be selfless. I was told to just put other people first and ignore my own needs. Like, what do you mean you have needs? No, you don't have needs. Like, that's so selfish. Don't do that. Like, that's the kind of upbringing I had when I was a kid. But now I realize that you cannot take care of anyone if you don't take care of yourself first. Even on airplanes, they tell you to put on your oxygen mask before you help your child. Like your child, the you know most important person in your life. But no, you have to help yourself first in order to help the child. Because if you don't even have oxygen, who the frick is going to take care of your child, right? And same thing, like not your child, maybe it's your husband, maybe it's your wife, maybe it's your boyfriend, girlfriend, maybe it's your parents, right? Like, if you don't take care of yourself, who is going to take care of them? Like, obviously, they are also going to take care of themselves. But if you don't take care of yourself, you also cannot take care of them, at least not in the long run. It's not going to be sustainable. And I think for a really long time, I went the 
you know, wrong approach, I want to say. I was just so focused on taking care of people around me and not taking care of myself. And over time, I built up this resentment. And you know what? That reminds me of my own childhood. My own caretaker was very resentful of me. Like she would say things like, like, how dare you do this? Like, I sacrificed so much for this family. How dare you pay me back? with this attitude or you know with these grades or with this behavior and i just felt so much resentment i felt like i was not loved i felt like i was a burden i was her baggage and i should just disappear from the world and that was the start of my depression as a kid so these are my lessons in 2023 happy new year <laughs> i feel like this may or may not have ended on a kind of negative note but you know what negative emotions depression whatever these are just part of life you know and we don't pick and choose we don't say we can only be high vibe in here no we're allowed to embrace everything in life including the sad including the tragedies including the sickness right like all of this is just part of the human experience and like why would we want it otherwise and you probably know like some of the best movies out there some of the best shows out there there's a bit of tragedy right there's a bit of conflict if it's all like happy-go-lucky rainbows and butterflies then it's not going to be so interesting, is it? But there's some conflict, there's some tension, there's some tragedy, and you're like, wow, I really feel something. <laughs> this movie is really making me feel. So same thing with the human experience. Like, we're not going for, like, love and light, positive vibes only. No. We are accepting everything. We're embracing everything. We're surrendering to everything. And that is my intention for 2024. How about you? Share this episode with anyone you think can benefit from it. Thank you so much for tuning in and don't forget to subscribe. If you absolutely loved what you heard today, be sure to share it with me by leaving a review or taking a screenshot of this episode, tagging me at cherrytung.co and sharing it on Instagram where I'm most active. I can't wait to connect with you. In the meantime, go out there and seek your freedom.